I, um, I, I want to introduce you uh, to uh, Marco Montemagno, who has um, founded Italy's largest blog network, and he hosted the most popular tech show on Sky TV in Italy. And now he's the founder of and host of Tale Alchemist, which is a web video show. Most importantly, he has an accent. He has the same haircut as me. He's, he's not as tall, though, but he's going to host the stage for, for some time. Um, just because I, I have been doing the, the entire thing last year for three days, uh, nonstop, including the Q&As. And I like to know that I can rely on someone else uh, sometime as well. So Marco, you want to join me? Right. I'm the shorter version, yes. I would say. So I like your haircut. Yeah, yeah it's good. Huh? I, today I had long hair, but uh, OK. So good. can I leave you the stage? You sure? I will try. Are I you know. sure? Yeah, I, I need your help, guys. I need really your help. <laughs> you know to do this. Oh, OK. All right. OK, so Thanks. Marco Montebagno, and I'm going to um, do some kite surfing. Golf. <laughs> all right. Not golf. No. Thanks, Lloyd. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, I'm a tech person like most of you. And uh, I want to say that I was in backstage for now a couple of days. And I love the job that the technical crew of Le Web is doing. So I just want to ask you, the, the cameraman, video people, uh, audio people, the stage director, everyone, can we give them an amazing applause to thank them for what they're doing? Really an amazing applause, really. Wait, wait, I say an amazing applause, an amazing applause. All right, excellent. So let's go to the next guest. Thank you, guys. Uh, Dalton Caldwell, the founder of App.net, is talking about the business model of Internet of Things. Dalton Caldwell. Hi, everybody. Um, it's, uh, it's good to be here uh, at the web. Hopefully, I'm not too jet lagged. Um, I'm here today to talk about noise. And uh, the reason I want to talk about noise is that I think it's arguably the most important aspect of the Internet of Things. Um, so first of all, good news. <laughs> uh, based on most of the speakers that you've seen today, uh, I think we can safely assume that um, the promise of the Internet of Things is already here, meaning uh, our thermostats are going to be riding um, uh, events that we're going to receive. Uh, there's really polished and useful products constantly being shipped uh, that send us these, uh, send us sensory data. And I think we can safely assume that the amount of information that we're going to have to process as a direct outcome of the Internet of Things is going to, is going to, um, going to increase. And, you know, I think that's a good thing. However, I don't, I don't think I've heard anyone talk about this yet. Um, I think there's some, there's some downsides to this amount of information that we're going to have to process. And this is a topic that I am incredibly uh, passionate about and I think about constantly, which is my own information consumption and trying to, to make sense uh, out of all, trying to find the signal in, the, uh, in all the noise that I process on a daily basis. And so I would suggest that Instrumenting all of these, all these devices and all these sensors is going to lead to um, really difficult noise problems. And I'm not convinced that, um, that the filters have been effectively solved yet. Um, and I would also argue that getting the signal from all this noise is a harder technical problem than creating all these sensors. Do you know what I'm saying? This is, this is something in big data, uh, right? Is that, oh, great, we now have this huge database, and we've linked all of our databases together. But actually creating actionable in intelligence, um, you know, the jury's not in on that one yet. And you know, think about this in your own life. If you already are struggling with your email inbox or your social streams, and you feel overwhelmed uh, trying to make sense of these things, I would suggest that um, you know, the Internet of Things is going to make this much worse. Um, and as a couple of other speakers have mentioned, um, Google Glasses is going to be coming soon. Just think about the amount of raw data that is going to be generated. Geo data, photo data, um, people near you data. Uh, and this all is going to get written somewhere. And you know, I think for this product to be uh, useful, there's going to need to be a way to get that data back out. So my analog for making sense of all this data is, um, is running a server farm. And so in my previous company, we had on the order of thousands of servers. 
and I got to see up close and personal what it was like to manage um, this many computers that are able to, um, able to give you information about what's happening. And I would say that the, the Goldilocks principle is a way to think about this, meaning uh, not too hot and not too cold, and you have to get it just right. Um, and so when you're, when you're trying to make sense of the noise that's put off by something on the scale of 1,000 servers, you have to constantly be tuning up or tuning down the email notifications that you get uh, from these things. Otherwise, you're actually um, going to, to screw up and your site's going to go down because you didn't catch an important signal. Um, or your inbox is going to be such a mess that you're going you're gonna to screw up as well. And you know, along these same lines, let's say all of these thousands of machines are constantly logging data you can end up with 10 terabytes of log data. And you can say, wow, that's really impressive. We have 10 terabytes of log data. But how do you make that actionable? How do you make sense of that? Um, and you know, I think this is a lot like what the normal consumer's life is going to be like in a few years. Um, <clears throat> thinking about SMS and email alerts, let's say you have one server, and the power goes down. So you get one SMS alert, you know, server down, power out, and then you get another one. Oh, server's back. All right, that, I guess that's manageable. Well, OK, let's say you have 10 servers. OK, that's, that's, that's 20 alerts, 100 servers. When you get to 1,000 servers, um, trying to make sense of, of 2,000 emails that you get or 2,000 SMSs that you get in about 30 seconds is completely overwhelming. And uh, I imagine this could happen anytime you have uh, major Internet of Things events. So there's other comps for managing this noise. Um, I would say that the social web is our best example. Um, there's a lot of services that you guys see that um, auto-tweet or um, open graph is an example of, a, of frictionless sharing where if you watch a video or read an article or listen to a song, it, it posts to your feed. It registers that and auto-posts it. Um, and that's, that generates a lot of noise. And the way consumers manage this um, <clears throat> on an unfiltered stream, and I'm going to use this terminology more in a second about filtered versus unfiltered streams. On an unfiltered stream, what are you supposed to do if someone is posting too much stuff? Uh, you're supposed to either unfollow them, uh, which is a polite thing to do, uh, unsubscribe from those events, in other words, or politely ask them or unpolitely ask them to stop posting so much. And on a filtered stream, you actually want the algorithm to do the work um, of taking some of those less useful news stories and hiding them from you. And I think this distinction is very important uh, as we talk about the application of the Internet of Things in that um, Consuming a completely unfiltered stream is becoming almost impossible, and we're starting to hit the limits of, of human uh, cognitive capacity to process this much information. Right? There's only so many emails you can make sense of in a day. There's only so many tweets that you can read in a day. And um, I think that filtered feeds are good because they can make literally infinitely um, large amounts of data feel manageable to you. Right? There's always a constrained amount of data that you have to make sense of. Um, I would actually point to Facebook newsfeed as an excellent implementation of a filtered, of a filtered stream because um, important events always go to the top, and they're, they're quite good at finding that, like someone's birthday or someone's engagement or something. It eliminates redundancy, so if there's several events that are the same, they can match those together and say, this is the same event that came from multiple people. And it also optimizes on time and engagement metrics. So the algorithm actually learns uh, when it's filtering your stream. So how are people going to be managing their personal Internet of Things, right? So if we accept this future, you know, we have all these devices, we have all these sensors, they're writing to the database, um, and every person's basically running their own server farm, right? Um, I'd suggest that these services may have their own data stores that are specialized to that specific service, but there's also going to be an event and alert notification uh, queue, and this is going to come through via the good old standards, email, SMS, or social. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, when you f finding out events, parsing out interesting information that come from these things, you're going to have to make sense of in your main inbox. Um, I think that streams are especially useful for this use case because uh, you can do filters. As I mentioned in my, in my, in my last slide, um, being able to filter this, this mass of data, I think, is going to be the only way to make it not feel overwhelming to a normal consumer. However, I think there's some issues. And if you're familiar with uh, app.net and uh, kind of my background, you will notice that I have a widespread critique of advertising supported quote unquote free business models um, having some downsides um, as it relates to uh, to a few things so in this specific case um, you know you don't necessarily want a third party displaying the stream you want to you want the users using your specific app so you can put advertising in it um, 
you also don't necessarily want a pluggable algorithm um, because if, if your job is to put ads into the main feed, letting someone swap in another filtering algorithm is, is somewhat antithetical to your, your core business model. Um, you don't really necessarily want your content leaking out, so the data in your service, you don't necessarily want to go to another service. Um, I'm not sure if you want to host home automation type data. Maybe, you know, I put a question mark there because maybe there'll be a new Facebook uh, home automation product they announce next year, but uh, hey, I, I think there could be a good argument why they don't want to host that. And, and finally, um, ad-supported business models will optimize on engagement and not utility. And I think that's important. So engagement means uh, the person addictively hits their stream constantly, right? If you're, if you're optimizing for engagement, you want someone to constantly be checking in and finding new things to look at. Whereas uh, utility means, hey, if something happens that's important, tell me about it. Otherwise, stay out of my way and don't bother me, right? And so I'd argue that optimizing on engagement actually increases noise. So what if we ignore these business model limits? What, what sort of things could we build? Um, my argument is that the best thing for consumers is an unbundling. That's the terminology I'm using. An unbundling of the stream. And let me, let me explain what I mean by that a little bit. Um, pluggable APIs that are able to write to the stream, right? So this would mean uh, you know, your Nest or your Google Glasses or what have you can all um, have plugins that write to it. Pluggable filters the unified stream. And what I mean by that is that um, you know, maybe, maybe Robert Scoble has a certain way that he wants to filter his stream. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe naive consumers want something really simple out of the box that filters their stream. Um, there's a lot of different notions of what quality is from filtering these things. And ideally, you'd want the filters to be pluggable. Uh, additionally, I think um, pluggable UIs would be useful, meaning maybe you view it on your mobile device, maybe you view it on the desktop, um, maybe you like ascending or descending order, but uh, consumers are given the widest variety of choice on how they consume this amount of information. And finally, ownership and exportability of all data so you can move to another service, I think, would be an important property to unbundling a stream. So what do I mean by an unbundled service? I figured, given that I'm using this new terminology, I'd give some examples of what an un unbundled service looks like. So what does an unbundled read and write API look like? It's, it's IFTT, I -F -T -T -T, if you're familiar with it. It's kind of like Yahoo Pipes. It lets you pipe one uh, piece of information, say um, Facebook. Uh, if a certain rule set is satisfied, it pipes it to Evernote. And it's a way to just mash up all these different things when you're creating a rules engine. And I think that's an incredibly powerful unbundled example of a read write up API. Uh, what's an example of an unbundled UI? I would say that third party Twitter clients are an example where Perhaps a user has a specific need that needs to be met. Maybe there's a way they like to consume information. There's a way they like to consume their stream that is different. Um, the the uh, innovation that's happened in third-party Twitter clients has demonstrated um, the power of unbundling this particular user interface. And a lot of things like pull to refresh, which we all use every day, was actually created by someone attempting to innovate um, the their own third-party Twitter client. Um, and so I think that shows that uh, these things are a hotbed of innovation. Um, additionally, um, Flipboard, I would say, is a very large company that it's not their own stream. They're pulling the data from elsewhere, but they're actually building an end-to-end -end filter um, that does an excellent job of, of, of honestly unbundling this. And you know, it's worth noting that all of those examples I just stated have been running into issues uh, because of platform risk, uh, because of business model challenges. And so unbundling is not something that's been going over too well on the social platforms that we live with today. I, uh, I built app.net to be unbundled because I'm a believer that the best thing for consumers is giving them choice across all of these different schemes. I think having choices about what kinds of things you plug into the API, choices about what kind of filters filter your stream, and choices about the UI and context by which you consume this information is the best way to build great user experiences. Um, Otherwise, you end up with a completely siloed experience that is controlled uh, by, by one company. And that may be the, the best thing for a lot of people, but ultimately, I think it, it slows you down. Um, in terms of us, we, we, we've, we've seen a great, um, great uptick uh, on these various kinds of unbundling components uh, occurring. Something that we're about to release is a private messages API. And I was really excited to come talk uh, at this conference about the Internet of Things because this API is about to come out. And 
if I'm thinking about creating a mashup or if I wanted to create uh, my own Internet of Things stream, I would want an API like this to exist. Um, and so basically, uh, you can create a private stream, meaning it's not public, it's only for you, with a single app.net account. You can have multiple endpoints, including bots um, or, or non-human uh, non -human accounts writing to it. And uh, they can all write to this unified stream. And this unified stream can be filtered and consumed um, according to uh, the rule set of whatever the consumer chooses, meaning if they want to throw in a, a stream filter um, to collapse duplicate data, say, or to alert them if certain thresholds are reached, they can easily do so. And I think this is going to be an interesting um, context by which third parties can create these pluggable filters. And in terms of business models, which is, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm giving the talk, is that in a services business model, plugging in these various components that are not controlled by app.net uh, works well. Um, and so you know, instead of having to discourage this kind of plugin behavior happening or let it go on and not worry about it too much, this is the whole reason the service exists. So getting towards the tail end of this, um, I really do think that the overwhelming amount of digital information that we have to consume is a very big technical problem. And even irrespective of the app.net business, I think that many of the people in the room are going to need to contemplate how we, um, how we turn down the noise for people to, to get value out of all of these different Internet of Things applications. And again, like making data useful and actionable is uh, is a lot harder a technical problem, and honestly, far more important than just selling them gadgets, which, uh, which have cool packaging that purport to do cool things. But if it's not actionable, it's not actually useful. And um, you know, I think unbundling is, uh, is the best way to deliver innovative consumer experiences um, versus building a complete siloed approach. And given the, the wars that we're currently seeing on platforms of doing something that only works in the Apple ecosystem or only works in the Google ecosystem or only works in the Facebook ecosystem, um, we may see huge innovation on those individual silos. But if a consumer can't make sense of all these things in a unified stream, I'd argue they're actually the ones that are losing. Um, so uh, that is why we are focusing on unbundling stream. That is why we are believing that the third party ecosystem cre can create uh, a better filter experience, a better UI experience, um, and a better backend experience that can be done by a single silo. And that's the bed of app.net. Um, and so far, so good. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.